All over Ireland, our natural biodiversity is at stake from invasive species, which are choking the life out of our waterways and killing our forests. In this programme, we'll see what is being done to protect our ecology. Tanu goes on an eco-tour of the Salty Islands in Wexford, an amazing oasis of plant and animal species that we can all appreciate. Also, Tanya and I see if Ireland really is going through a bicycle revolution. Like it or not, we've been colonised. Slowly but surely, aliens are multiplying amongst us. This invasion has been going on for years now, and some of us have been helping the enemy dig in for the long haul. But how good do you think you'd be at spotting one? Would you know what to look for? And more importantly, would you know what to do if you found one? Hitching a ride from southeast Russia, the zebra mussel has invaded our rivers and lakes, disrupting the local ecosystems. The giant rhubarb, or gunnera, grows up to two and a half metres with a canopy of enormous leaves that can smother its competition for light. The Chinese mitten crab, with its brown distinctive colour, could make the most wanted list with its impact on biodiversity. To date, Germany has spent eight million euro to get rid of it. To find out what has been done to tackle one of our most persistent alien invaders, I paid a visit to a research programme in County Galway that aims to remove the curly-leafed waterweed, or Lagora siphon major, a non-native species that has infested the bays of Loch Carib. There I met Joe Caffrey and his team, who have undertaken a research programme to investigate and cure the problem. We're not exactly sure what happened, but what we think is that somewhere in the catchment, probably well upstream in the catchment, somebody had a garden pond into which they'd introduced Lagra siphon. We would imagine that the person dumped it into a stream. The stream carried it to the lake and found a habitat such as the bay that we're currently working in. We did an estimation in a bay very similar to this. We estimated that there was about 1,600 tonnes of weed. Two years later, to show how fast this plant grows, there was nearly 3,000 tonnes of weed. Spreading that quickly. So in bays where Lagra siphon has grown successfully, we have no native plant species. So we're talking about species extinctions here as caused by invasive species. And is it going to spread all over the lake? Well, 2005, we found it in nine bays in the upper lake. By 2008, it was in 113 bays throughout the lake. It's spreading exponentially. It's not spreading rapidly, exponentially. The programme aims to understand how Lagra siphon grows in Ireland because we just don't know its life cycle traits here. And studying the life cycle traits should show us weak links in the life cycle that we may specifically target. But in the interim, because there's so much weed here and because it's spreading so rapidly, we've got to go about controlling. So what we're seeing behind us now is a robust, pretty rough mechanical control method. So Greg, tell us what you're doing here. Well, as you can see, we've got a fairly major operation here with uh, two boats trying to pick up the weed, one of which has already cut it, and uh, there's other staff on the shore forking it away, and we also have a containment net that they've already had to put out to stop bits of the weed floating away and, uh, you know, impregnating other areas of the lakes. And what do you do with all of this? Is it a form of biomass or anything? Well, unfortunately, that's all been looked at, and really, uh, from a fertiliser point of view, it's useless. It's, there's very little nutrient value in it. So that what we do is we basically compost it on the lake shore, and it dies down to nothing when the water kind of uh, goes out of it. New research by the team has shown that covering the plant with a hemp fabric interrupts the life cycle of the weed, giving the native species a chance to fight back. So it just pushes it all to the bottom. We put some weights on it. We obviously have to have divers making sure that it covers the weed. Then you just leave it and the natural plants come in and repopulate the area. Really what we're doing is trying to just stop the exponential explosion of this within the lake while the research is ongoing to try and find a long-term solution. This isn't the long-term solution. If you left it continue and you didn't have any action here, what would happen? I'd say within 10 years, 
All the bays around six metres and shallower would be all unnavigable. There'd be weed everywhere. Who's doing all of this work? Well, all the logistics here is done basically by the Western Fishery Board staff and a few staff from the Office of Public Works, and then all the scientific end of it is done by the Central Fisheries Board. Right. This is a three-year research programme co-funded by the National Parks and Wildlife Service to try and head off what is effectively a time bomb for our native biodiversity. It's very much up to the public at large to keep us informed as to the extent of the problems. Where you see invasive species, even if you're not sure what it is, please let us in the Central Fisheries Board know. It's important that we know what's out there so that we can address it before it gets out of hand. So if these are allowed to spread and the damage they can do over the next, say, 10 years, are we talking about big money here? I, I'd be tempted to say billions. As I said, I'm not an economist, but they could certainly reap very significant, significant havoc. This yes, like it could cause billions. Next, I investigate one unlikely killer you may pass every day. Part of its success is that we've taken its presence for granted for so long and revered it for its exotic qualities. But make no mistake, Ignoring the common rhododendron ponticum will cost us dearly. Sean, there's many different species of rhododendron here in Ireland now today. Yeah. Can you tell us about them? Well, we have a history of their introduction into Ireland going back to the 1820s, perhaps. We have about 300 varieties or species of rhododendron in the gardens in Glenvay alone. But there's only the one that causes the problem. So ponticum is a specific one that's causing all the damage. Yeah. Why is that and where does it come from? Well, rhododendron ponticum, we believe, was a hybrid. It's partly a European species and partly an American species, and it was seen as a valuable cover plant for pheasants and for grouse and all that sort of stuff. So why did it establish itself so well here? We have perfect growing conditions. You know, these come up very, very rapidly. In a matter of three, four, five years, you can go from a seedling plant to a flowering plant. Yeah? So the, all the seeds are just kind of... Yeah. And the, the seed capsules follow the flowers and each capsule has thousands of very, very powdery, tiny seeds that will float about in the wind. So they spread out? Yeah. So all of this now, the vegetation here we yeah. see on the ground here, that was rhododendron? Yeah. And yeah. was this the first cutting? This is actually the second cut on this particular piece here. So the woodlands had 20 feet high of rhododendron, completely chock-a-block. So you couldn't see the native trees at all. The decision was made in the 1970s when this became a national park to make a very, very concerted effort to remove ponticum from all of these woodlands. So how did you cut them down? They were cut by chainsaw. So we use contractors. So we brought in many different contractors over the last 30 years and they have systematically worked through different plots or sections of the park. The most environmentally friendly spray that we can use is glyphosate and that is a very effective way of killing off the stump. And then once that is done, then all the seedlings that still come up as a result of there being so much seed out there in the environment, all the seedlings have to be actually hand pulled. Further down the glen where 20 years ago the clearance was done, you'll see a very nice regeneration of the native flora and that's what we want to see repeated throughout the park. And what sort of cost is this going to be? Well, probably over the 30 year period, we're talking about millions, perhaps two million now at this stage. In this one yeah. estate alone? Yeah. Well, definitely, we, I think we could regard rhododendron ponticum as the biggest spreader and biggest offender in the landscape. It is changing the whole flora. It's displacing all the native species. So it is a very, very big problem. And I think it, where, where possible, it needs to be addressed. It really does, yeah. So what can we do? A major source of invasive species is through garden centres and pet shops, importing exotic but damaging aliens. New regulations have been introduced to prevent this, with a target list of banned plants and animals. We should look out for and remove these to prevent spreading. <laughs>